Well, here we are in the glorious sunshine of the Dorset countryside. Well, in December, maybe not so sunny, but we have got some very fast race cars to have a look at today. And of course, all electrically powered on this channel. The Extreme E X Pre, the Jurassic X Pre is here. The fifth and final round of the 2021 season, the first season of electric SUV racing, they like to call it. And there you can see they're giving one of them a bath because the conditions here in Dorset, about 10 minutes away from my house, fair to say it's a little bit muddy. Let me give you a little look around. This is the paddock area. It's somewhere called Bovington. Maybe you've heard of the Tank Museum for my uh, UK viewers and listeners. But uh, this is what they're doing right now with the uh, washing the cars. One of the cars has come back and yeah, they've stripped down the front there and they're giving a little little hose down. The cars came back in here. They all did a bit of a shakedown test earlier and they uh, just making sure someone's not run over. <clears throat> they all come back. Uh, to be washed down because it is so so muddy here we've not had a huge amount of rain funnily enough over the last couple of weeks i did see the forecast might be a bit wet this weekend i'm here on the thursday they're going to be racing on saturday and sunday in these odyssey 21s the first year of these cars a lot will be carried over to season two in terms of things like the battery pack and the energy store and so let me take you through to the paddock. There's the RXR car in the background. As of recording, uh, championship leaders. By the time you watch this, they may well have found out who the championship winner is after the race on, on Sunday. So here we are in the Dorset countryside in Bovington. Yeah, it's a little bit muddy. I've got my boots on. But not me welly boots. I think I, I think I should have put my boots on. Um, my proper welly boots, because it's going to be knee high down here. And this is an Extreme E paddock. This is what's been built about a month ago. It takes about a month to build all of this. I've done some groundworks over there as well. They've been uh, McLaren were here a little while ago because they're going to be a 2022 entry, and so they've been. Uh, you can see that video online, McLaren have been testing as the RXR car over there is still waiting to get the go ahead. A lot of this testing is for the teams to shake down the vehicles. Of course, they've all been put on the St. Helena, which is at Pool Quay, as they sail these all around the, the world, the floating paddock, if you like, and the uh, scientific lab that's on board that ship as well. So a lot of this will be the teams wanting to shake down, make sure everything's working as it should do. These cars are all built by Spark Racing Technology. Uh, the battery pack of the energy store done by Williams Advanced Engineering. We'll watch that head off. Not particularly high speed, but just look how bumpy and wet. And... Holy moly. Yeah, that's gonna be... Uh... That's going to be a, a wet one um, this weekend. And then I'll just take you along the paddock that has kind of popped up out of nowhere, maybe even with the help of the army. And I've seen plenty of army people here as well to uh, marshal, I think, marshal um, the event. Uh, Katie Munnings' uh, garage there. She might be uh, fancying a bit of victory this weekend. She'd be a, a home hero, <laughs> you'd call her as they come back to the uh, the UK for the Andretti United team. Um, they're again working on the vehicles. Lewis Hamilton's team X44 must be out right now, doing some shakedown stuff. We've got the Chip Ganassi team in here. And just look at the state that these are coming back in. Even after they've been cleaned as well, they look pretty dirty. We'll get past a bit of uh, running repairs. We have the Excite team here. Of course, many of my UK viewers will know my energy as well. Uh, here we have uh, the Veloce team uh, behind me. Like I say, Shakedown is really about making sure that these, these vehicles are all working as they should be. We saw the RXR car go off. Not sure whether it was uh, Molly or Johan 
driving it, but that's their, that's their garage in there. Championship leaders as I record it, but who knows? Bit of a fight at the top of the, uh, the points table between Rosberg and Hamilton. That sounds familiar from <laughs> Formula One. The Ab Cooper team here. I saw a nice Cooper of Bourne on the way in. The ID3, but with much better styling. Got some army over here as well, helping to organize the event. Now the guys from Spark are in here. Now Spark, of course, developing that chassis and the technology around the car. Williams Advanced Engineering in here. We'll be talking to them a little bit later. Maybe this is Williams. Yeah, the Williams boys are in here. They use 2170s in the Odyssey 21s. They use exactly the same uh, battery packs, not the packs themselves, uh, that you would find in your road cars if you drive a Tesla Model 3 or a Model Y. Uh, but yeah, the same, not the same cells maybe, same form factor. Uh, Williams Advanced Engineering saying that these battery packs have done about four and a half thousand kilometers so far in terms of running and they uh, will be used next year for season two so uh, no thermal management on these the only thermal management they've got is when they come back to the pits and uh, they blow cold air through uh, and i presume hot air if it's not hot enough before they go out they do precondition precondition them uh, but they are very much a uh, a passive battery pack um, no liquid thermal management or anything like that in the vehicles. We'll grab someone from Williams a little bit later uh, to talk to. So if you're going to be watching it on TV, maybe streaming it online sometime this weekend, that shows you behind the scenes. That is where they're going to be racing. Here we are in the back of the Spark Racing Technology garage. Spark are the team that built this incredible Odyssey 21. They've worked on Formula E and using those partnerships, uh, they were commissioned to build this incredible vehicle. Let me spin you around and show you what I'm looking at, which is uh, with the rear of the car taken off, you can see much more inside it, a little charging. I love this, like so much technology and then just kind of sitting out there almost unprotected uh, is the charging port that you'd see on your car at home. Uh, but of course, that's where they juice up and this is where they would juice up from. What is this, a juice pump 40? race edition but it's got the chem power logo and we like chem power stuff <laughs> we're just starting to get it here as well in the uk i won't touch it but it's exactly what you would expect ccs combo plug going into there i mean this is any engineering nerds absolute dream you can see these tires uh, these continental tires by the way were commissioned by extreme e this tread pattern is all custom of course extreme e is racing on sand and gravel and snow they have to work everywhere and so incredible tires were designed from scratch and that was uh, the brief that uh, that they were given to come up with this particular design it's not just a trip down the uh, quick fit and asking for a set of those tires you can see uh, here you'll recognize this if you are into your evs got some high voltage stuff in here that'll be the inverter in there i imagine um, deep 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 in there is the battery pack from williams advanced engineering they work next door over there we'll head over there in a moment um, and then in here, so twin motor, all wheel drive in these uh, Odyssey uh, 21s, which have held up incredible for the first year of racing in the most extreme, harsh conditions around the world. We've seen some big offs this year as well. And these cars have held up really, really well in terms of um, just how robust they've been. We've seen them on their roofs and flipping over uh, and they've been really safe. But let me show you in here, this is, uh, well, this is the business end of what I want to show you in there. That is the driver's eye view. Very high tech in the uh, in the cabin. Well, that'll be because there's cameras. So no wing mirrors, but there are cameras. And I don't know how long these cameras are going to stay mud free, but there's one up top and there's one on the side as well. But this is inside the Odyssey 21 and some of the engineers here from Spark uh, working on working on the vehicle and uh, of course they're here at every every race every round to uh, to support the teams 
with parts and engineering solutions and, and things like that. Uh, 2.3 meters wide, these vehicles. Three meter long wheelbase, same as a Hyundai Ioniq 5. Probably take this to a few more places than a Hyundai. And uh, a couple of meters tall as well. You know, race cars always look smaller when you see them in real life. But this thing is way, way bigger uh, than than it seems on telly. And when you uh, when you watch it, if you are uh, streaming a bit of Extreme E, the RXR car coming back from either being washed or uh, uh, maybe some shakedown runs or something, uh, just back into the garage there. And uh, even if it has, just, and it has just been washed by the look of it because they're jet washing everything as they come back. The Dorset mud, it's so muddy here. It's, it's just gonna immediately get super dirty again. But these are the pits in the pit area. And now let's have a wander along to Williams Advanced Engineering. Now Williams do, obviously Williams a massively famous name in, in racing, if you follow racing as well. A sad year as well for the Williams family uh, most recently as well, as we uh, said goodbye to Frank. But what a legacy he leaves behind uh, particularly with, you know, most people will know Williams from the Formula One name, right? But so much more than that. And here, Williams Advanced Engineering are the teams that are uh, working along with Spark and Extreme E, uh, supplying the powertrain technology for, uh, for Extreme E. And I'll just quickly walk into this garage and I'll show you the spares they bring along. And they actually bring along two whole battery packs spare, you know, just in case, uh, because the teams don't carry these spares. That's what Williams are here to do. But this is the entire battery pack. It is 50 kilowatt hours, I think maybe 54 kilowatt hours, but 50 usable. And again, I won't get too, too close, um, but this is the entire battery pack. No thermal management inside here at all. It's all air cooled when the cars get back into the uh, pit and paddock area by blowing either hot air to precondition them or cold air to cool them down after a race or a qualifying run. So they bring two entire spare packs. Of course, they're heavy and they have to shift these all around the world so they don't bring 10 of them. I think they have used them this year, they were saying. So they, uh, each of the teams have a battery pack and the battery does live right in the middle of the car and I believe it goes up. I believe they fit the battery pack up and underneath. And uh, I think they have used these spare ones when there's been a reason to investigate. And then what's in here, and again, I can't get into these because they're sealed for security reasons, but what's, in, what's inside are spare modules. So they actually bring not only whole battery packs along to an event, uh, but even down to module level. It's about 1.5 kilowatt hours uh, for a module of one of these. And then what the Williams team can do, if there's a reason to um, investigate, this is the Ab Cupra car here. Uh, they all look so cool, don't they? Uh, what the teams can do if there's a problem with one of the cells or one of the modules, uh, all hand-built, of course, um, by, uh, by Williams Advanced Engineering, is they can take that, they can decommission it, give them a spare. And here at the racetrack, uh, which is, you know, we are in Dorset in the UK, so we're 10 minutes away from a pool in Bournemouth, so we're not in the middle of nowhere, but Greenland, I think they were four hours away from the, from the nearest meaningful uh, thing they could get to. And so those uh, cells, thanks, uh, those cells uh, could be replaced by Williams um, on the fly and then put back into the original pack, etc. Now these packs uh, will do two seasons as well of uh, Formula E, they were uh, telling me a little bit earlier, which is deeply, deeply impressive using those 2170 cells uh, that you would find in a in a in, in a road car and and that technology um, as well, rather than anything that was particularly designed just for the racetrack. We've seen some big offs this year, as I mentioned, some rollovers, and those battery packs have coped, uh, you know, really, really well. They have to be uh, built, as you could see, uh, that way. So I hope you've enjoyed our look behind the scenes here at uh, at Extreme Live here in Dorset, and if you're going to be watching it on the box, or maybe you're watching this after the event it's not going to dry up is it it's going to stay this muddy oh man i cannot wait